Okay, okay. Sorry for the slow start. Get my pieces together. How are you tonight? How are you tonight? Okay, tonight we wanted to cover um, about 14 verses in um, I don't know if I need this, but we'll try. Uh, we don't need the projector, so is that off? Okay. One of the problems with the microphone and amplifier is that it's so loud. I'm probably in front of the speaker. We don't want to do that. <coughs> okay. Um, who remembers what book we're studying on Sunday nights when we come to North Linwood. Anybody know what book we're studying? Ever hear of it in the Bible? Go. Luke. Very good. Anybody know where the story is? A, okay, Luke is about the life of Jesus. Who knows where the first part of Luke, who knows what the first part of Luke tells us about? What's the first story, the first few stories in the book of Luke, anybody remember? What's the first few stories? It's about Jesus. So what, what was the first thing that happened to Jesus on earth? Yes. I can't hear you louder. His birth, yeah, thank you. So just like our lives on earth, we start with birth. But in Jesus' case, it was different because he actually existed in heaven before he was born. But our life actually starts when we are born. And then where does the Gospel of Luke end? It's the la very last chapter. What's the very last part of the story of Jesus that we read about in Luke? We haven't had it yet, so you'll have to guess. What's the end of Jesus' story in, in the Gospel? Thank you. I hope I don't mess you up too much. Okay, good. <clears throat> okay, uh, do you know what, uh, where it ends? Where? He rose from the dead. What happened right before he rose from the dead? He died on the cross. Okay, so if we're looking at the story of Luke, it begins over on one side when Jesus is born, and it ends over on the other side when Jesus died and rose again. So that's very good. Um, what happens in the middle then? Micah, do you, uh, do you know? What happens in the middle of Luke? What? His life. His life. What's his life consist of? It's different from your life. Doing miracles? Doing miracles. Yeah, that's what I wanted you to say. And one, one other thing besides miracles. What did he do besides miracles? Thank you. You're a good man. <laughs> what did Jesus do besides miracles in those chapters? Like if he saw a big crowd of people, he would do what? He'd heal them, but what else did he do with people? Yeah. He would preach to them. Thank you. That was the other one I wanted. He preached and he teach, taught them. <clears throat> so now if we're thinking of uh, Jesus' birth, what time am I done? Am I done at, at 7.30? Thank you, Ashish. Um, if I think of what we just talked about, the beginning, the middle, and the end of Jesus' life, what was the purpose of Luke telling us about Jesus' birth? What was special about Jesus? What do we learn? That's what I want to ask. What do we want to learn in the story of Jesus' birth? Do you know what we want to learn? Do you guys know? What do we want to learn uh, when we study this, or we hear the story of Jesus' birth? Do we know what why God wanted us to know about it? If you don't know, that's okay. That's okay, thank you. <clears throat> uh, 
what I was going to say is what's really important to me about the story of Jesus' birth is it tells me that he's the son of God. Did you know that? It says, when the angel talked to Mary, was it? Yeah, I think the angel was telling Mary that holy thing that will be born of you will be called the son of God. What's really important about uh, the end of Jesus' life when he died on the cross and then he came alive again? Why is that important to me or to you? Why is that important? The end of, of Jesus' life on earth. Luke. <laughs> That's a good answer. I like it. <clears throat> um, why is the, the last two chapters of the Gospel of Luke important to you and me? Why is the end of Jesus' life, his crucifixion, his resurrection from the dead? Why do we care? Why is it important? That's what I'm saying. Well, the fact that he rose again shows that his sacrifice for us is acceptable. Good. Very good. And also... If I wrote this down, I think it also shows that he's the son of God again. He rose by his own power. I mean, other people have been raised from the dead, but it's usually like a prophet or Jesus raising somebody from the dead. So uh, the middle section of, of Luke is talking about, I'm shouting now, because I'm not sure I'm going to be on the mic. Um, the middle section is about um, uh, the miracles and the teaching that Jesus did. So why are they important? Jackson, why is the miracle of Jesus important in the middle part of Luke? Well, it also shows that he's God. Yeah, yeah, it's another proof. Demonstration. Other prophets do miracles, but Jesus' miracles are very special to us. It's another, another proof that he's the son of God, son of God. He's the one who came down from heaven. Um, uh, another thing I guess you could take in, in the, uh, the last chapters about him dying is that he has power over death. I had that in one of my notes I wanted to say. Also, I think it's through that death and resurrection that he is able to forgive people's sins. He, he was given the power earlier on in one of the miracles, the paralyzed man. He, she showed them that this was proof that the Son of Man had power. But he, his death and resurrection completed that, giving him that ability. So now he became the sacrifice for people's sins. Does that make sense? I don't know if I'm talking to you guys over there. I hope I am. I'm forgetting to look at you. I'll wave once in a while. You can wave back. Thank you. Um, so in the middle section now I'm talking about the miracles and the teaching they're showing who, who Jesus is and actually helping us to understand uh, who he is that he actually it says in one place in the teaching he said the son of man came to seek and to save what was lost so that's another thing we learn about Jesus so the whole book of Luke is one purpose is to teach us who Jesus is he's the son of God He's got the power to forgive sins. He's got the power over death. He's got the power to help you and help power to help me. And I definitely need God's power. Okay, tonight we wanted to cover um, chapter 4, verses 31 to 44, which is the last part of chapter 4. Uh, the last time we were together and someone was talking to us about Luke 4, they were talking about when he went to the synagogue and he said, um, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to do all these things. Uh, well, I'm not going to be able to quote it. But anyway, and he said, today the scripture is fulfilled in your ears. And people were very impressed. And then he told the story about there were many lepers in the days of uh, Eli Elisha. But the only one of them was cured, and that was Naaman the Syrian, a foreigner. And there were many widows that were hungry during the famine, but only a foreigner. And so the people got really angry at Jesus, and they tried to kill him by throwing him over a cliff, and Jesus just walked through, through the middle of them because he, he had the power of God. So um, we're learning in the Gospel of Luke. A lot of... Don't do that. 
Uh, Joya, Joya, please. Thank you, Paul. Okay, uh, I lost my track. Um, so last time we were learning that Jesus was in uh, Nazareth, and then today we start the next section, and he goes from Nazareth to, um, to a city called Capernaum. And nobody here knows how far that is because you didn't look it up on Google. But uh, I think it's about 22 miles if you could fly. And so if you're walking, it's probably 24 or 25 miles. So it's a long way to walk. Um, Christian, how far can you walk in an hour? You don't know? One mile? Two? Three? Okay. What? I can't hear you. Okay, two to three if you're going fast. That's a good answer. So if it was 20, if it was 21 miles from uh, Nazareth to uh, Capernaum and he walked at three miles an hour, how many hours would it take Jesus to get there? Are you good at math, Luke? Not good. Okay. This, uh, okay. Gabriel. Seven hours, yeah. So that's a long time. I think I'm hollering loud enough, really. I'm, doing, I'm on my holler voice tonight. Um, okay, so uh, that, that also shows us another thing about Jesus. Possibly, I'm not sure. I'm guessing he didn't take a donkey or ride a chariot. So if he's going on foot, it would tell us that he's a good walker too. We don't know how long it take if he did it one day or two days. But anyway, he goes from Nazareth to uh, Capernaum. And what he did in Capernaum, he started teaching the people. We were saying that's one of the things he did. It doesn't say what he taught them. But it said that uh, there was some... I should read you the story. Then Jesus went to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, where he taught the people on the Sabbath. Um, Micah, do you know what day the Sabbath is now? Saturday. Saturday, right. From Friday night sunset until Saturday night sunset, that's Sabbath. Um, so uh, he taught the people on the Sabbath. They were all amazed. Not neat. He he didn't just teach as a regular person, but he taught in such a way that people were were amazed. He was really an unusual teacher. Uh, they were all amazed at the way he taught because he taught with authority. Um, I don't know who to ask the next question, but uh, the question is. Uh, what is authority? Do you know anybody in your, your life, your family, that has authority? Jariah, do you know who has authority in your family? You're not listening. Um, anybody know uh, what authority is? Do you know what authority is? No? It's okay to say no. Do you? Oh, good. Nobody knows. Maybe we'll learn something tonight. Or maybe you'll all be embarrassed and say, oh, I knew that. He just... Yes. Are you an authority? Are you an authority? Oh, okay. Go ahead. What are you going to say? I'm just being in charge. Okay. Being uh, authority means you're being in, char being in charge. Like, I'm not sure who's in charge tonight, but I think Ashish is, kind of. So we kind of look to Ashish to tell us what we're supposed to do and what time we're supposed to end. So it said Jesus taught with authority. So... Uh, one example, oh, I was going to tell you an example of, of, of authority that really surprised me. Do any of you ride buses? I used to ride the bus to work. And one time, there was a passenger, you know what passengers are? There are people that ride the bus. Um, I, there was a passenger on the bus, a man. And I don't think he was sitting with anybody, but he started talking to people, like to, to strangers. And I think he was shouting and saying maybe funny things like, uh, don't play mind games with me, something like that. And I was, you know, you kind of feel creepy when a bus rider, a bus passenger starts talking strange like that. Anyway, the driver of the bus was a lady, and she was a short lady. And I was so impressed at how that lady handled the situation, because this guy kept going for a while. I don't know if she gave him any warning, but eventually she stopped the bus and she told him to get off. And he did. 
I don't remember how long it took him to decide to get off, but I just was so impressed that that little lady, I thought maybe she had some really good training or maybe just one of her skills was she had authority and she knew how to use it. So authority is like when you tell somebody to do something and they do it. Like if you tell your brother or sister to do something and your brother or sister doesn't do it, that's because you don't have authority. But usually we hope that when your parents, like James, when your parents tell you what to do, you do it because your parent usually has authority. So that's good. Does anybody, uh, then it said that there was a man uh, in the synagogue who had a demon. Does anybody know what a demon is or an evil spirit? Has, yes, Christian, or Gabriel, excuse me. A, a bad spirit? A little louder. Right, a spirit that tries to control you and is evil and bad. Exactly. Uh, have any people here, adults or children, ever uh, seen somebody with an evil spirit, a, bad, a demon? Do have you, Dave? I'm not sure. Not sure. Do you think maybe? Possibly. Possibly. Yeah, the same way with me. We used to have a neighbor in our neighborhood until a few months ago. It was a lady, she walked around the neighborhood with a dog. And at first I thought she was talking to somebody on a cell phone, because sometimes people have a little uh, earphone in their ear and they can talk on the phone. But I'm sure she didn't have the cell phone. She was just shouting, she just did that. And uh, since then, a few months ago, they actually moved out of our neighborhood. But uh, Peggy and I have both uh, heard her and seen her sometimes when her on the road up to uh, the Safeway, which is just half a mile up the road from our house. And we can hear her shouting once in a while and we think, oh, I wonder if that's the same lady, but we're sure it is. But uh, I don't know if she has a demon, but it just reminds me, like in the story tonight, where um, uh, there was a demon uh, that talked to Jesus uh, and uh, it, the demon was shouting. So it kind of reminds me of that and kind of like maybe that man on the bus. I don't know if that was with the demon or not. We can't tell. God can tell. We can't tell. We just guess sometimes that something seems to be wrong. So anyway, uh, the story here is that the, Jesus taught and all the people were amazed at the way he taught because he taught with authority. In the synagogue, there was a man with the spirit of an evil demon in him. So the, there was this evil spirit. It wasn't the man's own spirit, but it was a different spirit from outside of him that came in like a spirit from the devil came into that man and it made him act crazy. And the man screamed out in a loud voice. Now my voice is going up. Could you tell? I was going like that. The man screamed out in a loud voice. Ah, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Are you here to destroy us? I know who you are. You are God's holy messenger. You're God's holy one. Wasn't that strange? Wouldn't that be scary if you were sitting in a, a church meeting? These people, it's kind of like a church. It was a, a synagogue, very similar, where people would sit around, and then all of a sudden, one of the people in the audience started shouting at Jesus. What are you here for? Are you going to bother us? You're going to destroy us? This was, you know... And so all the people kind of, ooh, just kind of chill running up your back. This is bad, bad, bad. I wonder what Jesus will do. And so Jesus ordered the spirit and Jesus said, be quiet. Come out of the man. Oh, yeah, I need some help. Would somebody like to be Jesus' part? Okay, Gabriel. If you need a name tag, we can write one for you, but you can just, okay. Now, all the rest of the kids, you're going to be the people in, in, and the adults, too. You're, you're the people in the synagogue. Okay, so um, who would like, probably you wouldn't want to, would you, Peg? Anybody want to be the man with the evil spirit? <laughs> it's a bad person to be. Okay, you want to be it? Okay, Peggy, you just sit there. Okay, we'll do that part of the story again. You ready? 
and we're going to act it out. And nobody has to say anything. I'll say all the words. And, and you people just have to listen to what I'm saying, to, you know, and you act if there's anything to act out. And so if Jesus is teaching, you can just kind of pretend like you're reading from a scroll or you can pretend like you're talking. Can you do that when you get going? I think you could. That's why you volunteered. So um, in the synagogue, there was a man who had an, e an evil demon in him. He screamed. So that's Peggy. You don't do it. But you, the man screamed, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Are you here to destroy us? I know who you are. You are God's holy messenger. So that's what you said. Jesus said to the spirit, be quiet and come out of the man. Thank you. And then, um, got to watch this part. The demon threw the man down in front of them and he went out of him. <gasps> he, without harming him, so that was good. And the people were, were all amazed and said to one another, now this is the people, that's you guys. What kind of words are these? With authority and power, this man gives orders to the evil spirits and they come out. Okay, you're better now. <laughs> Thank you. You can go back. I might need you again, but you did a good job, both of you. Thank you. Did you see how the audience reacted when you fell? That was good. <laughs> so that's what really happened. I mean, we're just acting, but that's what really happened. And then after that, it says, the report about Jesus spread everywhere in that region. So this is very unusual. You don't usually have somebody with an evil spirit in your synagogue or in your church building. You don't usually have people like that. So that would, people would start talking about that. I was at church today or I was at synagogue today. And this is what happened. A man screamed. And the teacher, he was Jesus from Nazareth. The teacher commanded the evil spirit to come out of him. And he did. He threw him down on the ground and he didn't get hurt. And then the evil spirit was out of the man. The man was back to normal. So then people started talking about it. Wow, who is this? How could he have that much kind of power? That's really strange. I've never heard of that in my life. We'll have to keep our eyes, our ears open to see if anything else is going to happen with this man named Jesus. Okay, that's the first story. There are three stories tonight. That's, that's the end of the first story. The next story... Jesus left the synagogue and he went to Simon's house. Oh, good. Do you want to come back, uh, uh, Gabriel? You can be Jesus again. Do you want to be the sick lady? You're my actor lady. You can, why don't you lie down there on, on the, uh, oh, you want to be, oh, that'd be great. Perfect. That's comfortable. Jariah? Um, uh, would you put your book down and I need you to come up here. Would you be my, you'll be my helper. You're a good guy. Thank you. Okay, just stand here. Who, your name today is Simon. Okay, you're Simon. And this lady is uh, your mother-in-law and she's in your house. Okay, and you talk to Jesus. Okay, so you get ready. I'll read you the story and all you guys have to do is listen to the words and act it out. Jesus left the synagogue. So you left the synagogue. And you, you go to Simon, so you, you tell Jesus to come to your house. Motion with your finger to Jesus to come to your house. And then your house is over here, Jariah. Okay, Simon's mother-in-law was sick with a high fever. Put your hand on your forehead. <laughs> and they spoke to Jesus about her. And Jesus went to her bedside and he ordered the fever to leave her. And she got up at once, and she began to wait on them. Thank you, Peggy. You feel better? Much better, yes. <laughs> okay, you can go back again, Gabriel. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shariah. Good guy. <clears throat> okay. After, after sunset, so because that, that happened right on the Sabbath day, then as soon as the sun goes down, it's not the Sabbath anymore, so it's the next day. After Sabbath, after sunset, 
all who had friends who were sick with various diseases brought them to Jesus. So we won't act out that part, but try to use your imagination. All the people who knew friends that were sick, they said, oh, my friend has COVID-19. Somebody else says, my friend has pancreatic cancer. Somebody else said, hmm, my friend just broke her ankle. And so they, they uh, hear that Jesus is at Peter's house, Simon's house, and they bring their friends to Jesus. And here's this what it says. After sunset, all who had friends that were sick with various diseases brought them to Jesus. He placed his hands on every one of them and healed them all. So if you were acting, no, you don't do it now. But if you're acting it out, you'd put your hands on everybody that was sick, whether it's a broken leg or uh, COVID-19 or uh, pancreatic cancer or any other kind of cancer or any other kind of diseases people had, like leprosy. You would put your hands on them and the people would get healed. How could Jesus do that? Any, anybody want to tell me? Isaiah? How could Jesus, uh, yeah. Because he was God? Because he was God. That's the right answer. Thank you. He healed them all. Demons came out, just like that first demon that we saw. Demons went out from many people screaming, you are the son of God. And Jesus gave the demons an order and he would not let them speak. So if Jesus had authority and he told them not to speak, could they still speak? No. I think, they, I think when he shut them up like that, he said, be quiet. I think they could not speak. I think he stopped them. Uh, my next question was, why did Jesus tell the demons not to tell people who Jesus was? Was it, tr was it true that he says, you are the son of God? Was that true? I agree. So why did Jesus tell the demons to be quiet about it? Somebody had this hand up. Is that you, Gabriel? Somebody. I, I don't know who had a hand up. Anybody else? No hands up. You want to tell me the answer? Why, why did Jesus not want people, not want the demons to tell people who he was? Anybody at your table want to take a guess? It's scary. You might be wrong. You can if you want. Why did Jesus tell the demons not to tell people who he was? Uh, Paul, I'll take you. You're in the back. Because if a bad person says that you are somebody good, people might not believe him. Yeah, right. Like, suppose... If, if people might think you're a bad idea. Yeah. If you had a friend who was always telling lies, I don't know if you've ever had a friend who tells lies. Hopefully you haven't. But sometimes people just, you never know if they're telling the truth. And so if somebody that tells lies comes up and says, Jesus is a good man, what would that mean? Is Jesus good or is Jesus bad? I can't hear you. It would be considered bad. Yeah, yeah, it would be considered bad. Right, thank you. Okay, so I, I think we understand kind of why he didn't want people, to, the demons, to, to tell him, tell people. Okay, then the last story is uh, starting at verse 42 here. It's kind of interesting. So that Saturday night after, after the sun went down, um, people were bringing him all kinds of sick people to, to heal. That was one thing that shows us that he's the son of God because he could heal people. But then... Um, So he's probably working till pretty late at night, who knows, maybe 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. If the sun goes down at 6, then 7, 8, you're getting past dinner time, and pretty soon it's getting late, and people are still coming, getting healed. And then finally, everybody's healed that, he, that came, and they all leave, and I think Jesus went to bed and went to sleep. I think so. I think he's normal like we are, that he does get tired from work. And he, uh, he does need rest. But then it says, early in the next morning, uh, this Bible I was 
looking at said at daybreak, so when the sun comes up or just before the sun came up when it was getting light, Jesus left town and he went off to a lonely place. Isn't that interesting? He left that town. He left, he got up and left and opened the door in Simon's house. He left and he walked out, went far away to a, a lonely place. Anybody have an idea why Jesus might do that? This is it's not an easy question. It's just kind of a guess. Want to guess why Jesus, yeah. Pray. To pray. You're right. It, it doesn't say that in the Gospel of Luke, but that's what we read in the Gospel of Mark, a different Gospel, but the same story. And so Jesus went out to pray. And then the people, they started looking for him. Oh, where did Jesus go? You know, knock at Simon's house. No, he's not here. He's not in his bed. He got up early. What, what, what did he do that for? Anyway, so they go find him and they say, Jesus, people want to see you again. They want to have more people get healed and come back with us, please. We need you. We've got a lot of sick people. And uh, Jesus told them no. And I'll read you that part of the story. The people started looking for him. And when they found him, they tried to keep him from leaving. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God in other towns also because that is what God sent me to do. Is that, what does that tell us about Jesus? It might tell us one or two things about Jesus. Anybody want to think about what it might, yeah. A little bit louder, Gabriel. Uh, say that again. My brain went off. Yeah. Okay, so that's why he had to go. Thank you. Sometimes I have a hard time hearing, so sorry. Um, yeah. One thing was interesting. He said, I must preach the kingdom of God in other towns also because that is what uh, God sent me to do. So he was not here just to do what he thought was a good idea, but he was here to obey God. He was here to obey his heavenly father. And he was the son of God. He was the perfect son. And a perfect son would always obey his father. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus obeyed his heavenly father. So even though maybe from a popularity point of view, you think, oh, yeah, I'd like to stay there. We could get a big crowd coming and this would really be fun. You know, I could, you know, people would like to hear me teaching. But no, he, he was sent by his father and he was obedient. And that's a good lesson for me and a good lesson for you is um, sometimes what we want to do might be different from what God wants us to do. So Luke, how would you be, there's two Lukes here. So uh, Luke, how could you tell what God's will is for you? Like in Jesus' case, he knew that it was the Father's will for him to go to other towns. Do, do you or do I have any way to help that we know what God wants us to do? Um, through his word, the Bible. Okay. Okay, yeah. I think it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, good answer. So it's from the Bible that we find God's will. Uh, the Holy Spirit, when we're born again, God gives us the Holy Spirit. And guy, it's kind of like a compass or a autopilot that kind of tells us what to do. So we have the Holy Spirit as believers. And then, um, forget what your last one was. Or other authorities. Just other authorities, yeah. Like if you're a... Uh, a young child living at home with your parents, your parents are definitely your authority. Your dad, your mom. Uh, and uh, if they tell you to put your shoes on before you go out in the snow, yeah, sure, you put your shoes. <laughs> Silly example. Uh, uh, but it, it's important to obey your parents, e even when you disagree. I think one of the hardest things I had to do when I was a kid was when mom wanted me to clean up my my toys or my closet or something. Just, just didn't have enough place for everything, I guess. It's hard to throw things away when you're a kid. 
Okay, so Jesus came to do his uh, father's will. And then it said, so he, he preached in the synagogues throughout that country. And I don't know what, what towns. It just says uh, he, he had to go to the other towns as well. And I, I looked in the, the Gospel of Luke and some of the other Gospels to see what kind of towns he might have been talking about going to. But like uh, he'd come from Nazareth and now he was in Capernaum and he's going to leave Capernaum for a while and he would go to different places. So um, somewhere I made a, a little map. When we, read the, uh, when we read the different Gospels, we find out that there is a lot of geography. This one actually came from Google, Google Maps. Um, just I went and tried to focus on the area that I wanted, and I, I, I used my own little um, dots for cities. I put dots in, and I put the, the labels in. I, I, do, I can't do this in a word. I do it in PowerPoint because PowerPoint's so nice for pasting stuff. But anyway, like up in the north, so down here is, I know you can't see. Um, you see this big blur here? This is a map. And on this part of the blur is Nazareth right here. This blue part here is the Lake Galilee, Sea of Galilee. Over here is the Mediterranean Sea, but we're talking about Galilee because that's where Jesus is. And so down here is Nazareth, which is about mm, 18, 20 miles if you went directly here. But Capernaum is about 22 miles up that way. And when you're driving here, this is kind of like going from the hill country downhill because uh, Sea of Galilee is about 600 feet below sea level, not, not as low as the Dead Sea. Dead Sea is about 11, 13 hundred feet. It's pretty, pretty low. That's way down here. Anyway, so you have different places. He healed. There's a, a man who died in the city of Nain. That's just a few miles south of Nazareth. There was a, um, a miracle that he did at a wedding just a few miles north of Nazareth in Cana. So I'm just guessing who knows what cities. It said he had to go to the other towns as well. And then here's Capernaum just up the hill a couple of miles from Capernaum was a city called Chorazim. And that was one of the places where Jesus did miracles and people didn't believe him. So he spoke to them about that. That was not good. All the evidence they had that he was the son of God and they weren't listening. But anyway, it just tells you uh, as you go through the gospels, these different towns that Jesus did go to. So those are probably some of them. Bethesda over here. And I'm not quite sure where to put Gadara, but Gadara is where a man went that had a legion of demons, not just one demon, but a whole pack of them, probably, I don't know, 2,000, there's a lot of demons that he had. And the demon said, uh, don't send us back into the pit, uh, send us into the pigs. There's a group of pigs there, a, thousand, a couple of thousand pigs, I think. And uh, when he said you could go, and so when the evil spirits went into the pigs, they ran down. Anyway, that was down, I'm guessing, about down here on the lake, because they they ran into the lake and drowned. Okay, that's all I wanted to say tonight, and it's about time to finish. Thank you for the people that were acting. Thank you, Peggy. Thanks, Jariah. Thanks, Christian. No, thanks, Gabriel. I stumble over your name. I try. Um, okay, uh, was that Vi you, Vivian? You were the one that was helping us, weren't you? I can't remember who all helped me. Anyway, everybody, thanks for who helped me. I needed help tonight. And I appreciate the audience. You've been a good audience tonight, so thank you for paying attention. Let's pray. Ask God to bless us. Lord, thank you for the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, power to forgive sins, power to wash our consciences, make us clean and white again. Um, after we, we know that we sin, I still sin, and we need the power of the Lord Jesus to forgive us our sins. Thank you, too, that Jesus had power to heal people. And we, even today, when someone's sick, Lord, we do pray in your name that um, you'd heal them. And we know that you do make people well. And thank you, Lord, too, for the refreshments that we have tonight. And pray your blessing on it. And you especially pray your blessing on your word that it will be good for each one of us from the youngest to the oldest. In Jesus' name, amen. I didn't use my uh, markup board. <laughs> uh, one use was uh, 